there. So just looking back at your previous history, it seems you've suffered with dry eyes in the past. At the time, you used some ocular lubricants to alleviate the issue. But it's been many years since your last examination and today we're going to investigate because the problem has arisen and it's being exacerbated by watching too much ASMR on your phone. Right, so I think we should start with a Sherma test. So we have these little strips here which have been pre-bended. These are what's called Sherma strips. And we just hook it over the lower lid as you're looking up. After a period of around five minutes, we check the quantity of tears that have been produced by looking and using the little scale there. So we're going to do both eyes could just pre-prepare the strips again. It's not going to touch your cornea, the little fold. We're going to do it to the edge and as you're looking up. Okay, so just looking up now, we'll place this little strip just under the lower lid there. Good. Okay. Let me take the other strip, looking up again. Place one under the lower left lid there, good, and keep looking up, blink as normal, and I have to give it a period of around five minutes, and then I'll check the results. So just looking at the results of the Sherma strips here, in each eye you have a, a tear volume of approximately four mil, four milliliters, uh, which does indicate there is some dryness there. So that's one test done. So if we record the results there, okay. So I think we should move on to a physical examination using the slit lamp here where we can have a look at the mybarmium glands which produce the lipid layer of the tears. We'll have a general look at the conjunctiva and make an assessment of the hyperemia there. We'll also have a little look at the tear ducts, the upper and lower tear, tear ducts in each eye to make sure that they're open so that we have adequate drainage of the tears. Okay, so, oh yes, and we'll also do some corneal staining with the yellow dye, just to check the integrity of the corneal surface, if there's any involvement there. Okay, so for checking and grading your eyes today, we're going to be using the Ephron grading scale here. Go look at things like conjunctival and the limbal redness there. We'll also use the corneal staining scale there. Maybe have a little look at the conjunctival staining. And just flipping around, we do have a category here for looking and grading the mybarmium glands there. All right. Okay, so I need you to come forward place your chin on the chin rest here and let's begin with the slit lamp assessment okay so we're just going to use some general white light here we'll be coming a little bit closer but rest assured the slit lamp does not touch the eyes Good. I'm just going to obtain the best focus here. Good. Okay. I'm just going to zoom in with the 
magnification okay just keep looking towards the dial here keep looking at this dial if it blocks your view the illuminating system just look where it should be I'm going to scan across checking the conjunctiva first so in the right eye we have a grade of approximately 1.5 using the afferent scale let's have a little look at the left eye okay just looking to the right hand side and to the left so to zoom in with the Mac here again just alter the beam height excellent okay now just looking up okay I'm going to go back to the right eye Looking to the right hand side, your right, now to the left. Okay, so I think we have a hyperemia grade of 1.5 in each eye there. So kind of between these two here, so not a lot of conjunctival redness. Now I want to pay specific attention to the meibomium glands. These are the lipid producing glands that are just beyond the eyelashes. We have an upper and lower row. So keep looking towards the dial here and just zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, so we might have a little bit of capping of the glands which indicates that there may be some obstruction okay just looking down I'm going to lift the upper lid here have a look at the upper row of glands there so most of those seem pretty open there good so we have a little bit of capping on the lower Okay, let me have a look at the lower puncta in the right eye, which is the tear duct. Just looking up again now. Good, so we don't appear to have any obstruction to that duct. Let's just have a look at the upper one. I have to lift the upper lid there. That appears open too, good. So no apparent issues with the tear ducts in the right eye. Okay, now for the left. Okay, we have a little bit of mybarmium gland foaming and a couple of caps there which indicates some blockages so we might have to devise a little management plan for you to combat the dry eyes that you're experiencing just looking down now have a look under or on the lash margin there and just beyond at the glands fairly open, good, looking up again, let's have a look at the tear duct, the lower puncta and the upper puncta, both appear open there, excellent, okay, let's make some notes there. have a grade 2 there in terms of blockages so mobile gland dysfunction MGD grade 2 right and left pretty much isolated to the lower lid and the upper 
and lower puncture Tidux are open right eye and left eye okay now we're going to do another tear film assessment this time we're not going to pop anything in your eyes we're going to use the slit lamp itself I'm going to focus on the right eye cornea and in a moment I'm going to ask you to blink and then stare for as long as you can so I can tell how long it takes for the tear film to break up so if you're ready one two three blink and stare for me Blink again. One, two, three, four. Okay, six and five seconds there. So about 5.5 seconds for the tear film to break up. Let's do a non invasive tear break up assessment in the left. Okay, blink and stare. seconds okay blink again and around four seconds in the left so using this method for tear assessment the left eye tear film is breaking up a little bit quicker than the right both are a little bit low Okay, we're going to do a slight invasive tear film assessment here. What I'd like to do is pop some orange dye into your eyes. It doesn't sting and it doesn't affect your vision. It's just going to bind to any damaged areas and I can visualize those through this little lamp. So just looking up for me. Looking up again for the left eye. Good. Okay, take a few blinks. I'm just going to alter the settings of the slit lamp. To increase the brightness as well. There we are, and we're going to use a yellow filter, which just enhances my view. Just looking at the dial here. Okay, blink and stare. Blink again and stare. Okay, no corneal staining, but a very low break up time. Blink and stare. Looking towards this dial here. Okay, blink again, now look up. So we don't appear to have any corneal staining in the left eye. But again, a tear break up time of around two to three seconds. So that is very low. So everything so far is pointing towards recurrence of your dry eye syndrome. And you have the symptoms to match. Looking here. Good. Excellent. Okay, let me pop a little bit of ocular lubricant into your eyes just to see if this relieves some of your symptoms. It doesn't sting by looking up. looking up okay just looking straight ahead take a few blinks okay. you feel a little bit of relief there good okay one more quick look going to have a look at the tear prism height very quickly along the lower lid margin good a little bit 
more complete now the drop set looking towards this style here good that looks a little bit higher as well since the drops have gone in so that's a good sign excellent so, let's have a little chat about management of your dry eyes I'm going to prescribe you some ocular lubricants such as this one here this is the Visio XL 5 milliliter bottle these drops you can pop in both eyes each day four to five times spread it out and that will provide a little bit of comfort but additionally we need to try and obtain a heat mask and you heat in the microwave and you need to be using a heat mask against your eyes for five to ten minutes to try and unblock the mybarmium glands so I'll get one of those for you I'm also going to ask you to include in your diet some omega-3 oils whether this comes in the form of supplements or oily fish this will help with the production of lipid from your tear ducts helping to create a better tear film quality and another source of this is flax seeds so if you can grab some flax seeds from the supermarket you want to eat or consume a very small little handful each day okay, and I'm going to review your dry eye situation in the clinic here in approximately two weeks so we'll make an appointment for that after you've been doing those things just to see how we're getting on so if you could make your way to the reception desk I will sort out what you need.